thank you so much for staying with me in this tutorial i will show you how we are going to resolve heteroscedasticity using white robot standard errors if you are just joining us kindly make sure you have watched um the previous videos on how to understand heteroscedasticity how you can detect the problem and how you can resolve the problem using either the functional forms or the weighted or generalized least quest approaches this tutorial i will just quickly show you how using the wise robot standard errors removes the problem of heteroscedasticity so if you are ready please load your data and let's get started and if you are interested in using my data set kindly follow the instruction as shown on the screen so continuing from where we stopped we are back to eviews i click on estimates using the level level forms of the variables i go to options i remove the weights from the last tutorial i take it back to none then other covariance method i open this box and i select huber white because now we want to introduce the white robot standard errors i click ok so on the screen we have the outcome of the regression and we are using the level form of the variables the level of price and the level of rooms and square feet for us to be sure whether the problem of heteroscedasticity has been removed or whether it still persists we go to view we click on residual diagnostics we select heteroscedasticity test using the bruch pagan godfrey test we click ok so here we have the result from the bruch pagan test and from the lm statistic of 10.57 we can see that the p value clearly indicates that this model is still heteroscedastic so this also confirms that level level models are more often than not heteroscedastic so despite even using robust standard errors we still have a heteroscedastic model so let's take the log form of the dependent variable and the levels of the variable in addition to the robust standard errors so next let's go to estimates and this time around we are going to use the log of price and we retain the level form of the regressors under options we are still using the hoover white covariance method which is a robust method so here we click ok to be sure whether the problem has been removed or whether it still persists we go to view residual diagnostics and we select heteroscedasticity test under bush pagan godfrey we click ok the lm statistic in this case is 2.97 and the p-value of the chi-square is 0.2265, which shows that this model is now homoscedastic. So by changing the functional form to a log level and using the robust method, we have been able to correct the problem of heteroscedasticity. We click on estimate. So this time around, let us use the log of square feet. Under options, it is still the Huber White covariance method. We we'll click OK. Here is the outcome, and let us now test for heteroscedasticity. We go to view, residual diagnostics, heteroscedasticity test. Still using the Bruch Pig and Godfrey, we click OK. The p value of the chi square is 0.1477. So this model is no longer heteroscedastic finally we use a log log model so i use a log of rooms option is still huber white and we click ok for us to test for heteroscedasticity we go to view residual diagnostics heteroscedasticity test using the bruch peg and godfrey we click ok as come of the bush pagan Godfrey test shows us from the p-value of the chi-square of 0.1053, the model is no longer heteroscedastic. So the outcome of this regression, if you have been following my video, is the same thing as when we used the functional form of the model to correct for heteroscedasticity. So that tells you, whenever you are able to transform your model into logs, you are most likely correcting 
which are scale elasticity. Even if you don't use robust standard errors. So we have gone through three stages now, using functional forms, using GLS approach, and using the white robust standard errors. These three mechanisms can always remove the problem of heteroscale elasticity. For more reading and references regarding using white robust standard errors, I will encourage you to pick any of these textbooks for more understanding. Thank you. We have now covered just a little bit about heteroscale elasticity. For as many of you are able to follow this tutorial, I'm sure you must have learned quite a lot about how heteroscale elasticity comes about, how you can detect it, and how you can correct it. Please share this video with your friends and with your loved ones. Thank you so much for watching, for staying with me throughout this tutorial series. I will encourage as many of you who are yet to subscribe, please subscribe to my channel. I am committed and dedicated to teach beginners and intermediate level users. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with more interesting videos.